Do you ever remember when you were a small child and you were holding your mother's hand down the street, playing tag with your friends, learning in school, parents tuck you in at night? Now imagine with me a childhood turned upside down, running in fear, when you were in a school day and all you hear is yelling, crying, gunshots, it was madness. Your heart is pounding, you're scared, there's no mom or dad in sight. Men with guns put an AK-47 in your hands, along with your friends. These new one men and children are your new family. Now this is just imagination for us, but to some, it's reality. It becomes reality to thousands of children today. According to UNICEF, millions of children are directly affected by war today. In being forced out of fear for their lives to leave their home and find a safer place to sleep at night or being unable to attend school, your friends and family are killed. Many of these tragedies have been happening throughout ages. <clears throat> the US Civil War, we can trace it back all the way to the American, um, Mexican-American War, the Russian Civil War in 1918, and the wars in Cambodia, and as some of you might know, uh, the Hitler Youth Regime. They are subjected to experience that, uh, to experiences that no child should ever go through. Currently, there are three hundred, more than three hundred thousand children that are fighting wars today. In more than 85 countries, there is no gender discrimination. Both boys and girls are recruited from ages 8 to 18. It is a global issue. From Afghanistan to Colombia, from Palestine to Nepal, from Sudan to Sri Lanka. It is happening today. Conflicts in these nations are notable for their brutality and the participation of child soldiers. Many of them are suicide bombers, a lot of them become murderers, and a lot of them become drug addicts. They're so-called the perfect weapon. Adults can resist warlords. Children can. They're available in great numbers, they're easily manipulated, they're intensely loyal, and they're fearless. Nonetheless, they're expendable. They are recruited via propaganda. They are recruited also by stories of poverty, how they can relate. They're, some of them are abducted, kidnapped by, uh, from their families, kidnapped from orphanages. In Uganda, a Lord's Resistance Army teaches child, children to burn huts and beat infants to death. In Iran, child soldiers are used to clear mines in the 1980s. In Palestine, between the West Bank and Gaza, they're used as suicide bombers. The author from A Long Way Gone, Ismail Bea, at a Paris conference said, no one is born violent. No child in Africa, Latin America, or Asia wants to be a part of war. Some, in rare cases, volunteer through promise of safety, sense of community. They're motivated by poverty and hunger. They're just trained to kill. These children behind me are being trained present day in Thailand. Obviously, they're fighting in all causes. Some don't even know why they're fighting. It may be because of colonial rule, or freedom challenged by another sector, army, or other countries. There's no sense of law. Or criminal drives by warlords, where they seek resources, where they're run by greed, and they look for power. Bea goes on to say there might have been a little rhetoric at the beginning, but very quickly the ideology gets lost. 
and then it just becomes a bloodbath, a war of memories. A lot of these kids are bound by belief from their commanders telling them to conjure spirits in order for protection to occur. Magic and superstition are heavily practiced throughout these countries. Oils and amulets are given to these children to basically lie to them. Bea goes on to say the commanders would wear certain pearls and said that guns wouldn't hurt us and we believed it. These kids are being lied to. They are also told that if they ate their victims in some cases, that they would grow stronger. They're intimidated by fear, by extreme punishments, death if they leave, rejection upon return is heavily forced into their mindset. That telling them that they will be orphaned when they go home, homeless, that they have nowhere else to go. A Columbia University professor, Neil Boothby, these are brutally thugging people who don't want to rule politically and have no strategy for winning a war. Weakened by deprivation, they are separated by families, they are denied educational opportunities, they are denied health care, most importantly, they are denied a childhood. They are fueled by drugs, amphetamine, marijuana, the brown brown, which is cocaine and gunpowder, and Bea says that I shot everything that moved. They are trapped in mental and, in, and emotional abuse, physical, sexual, no matter if you're a boy or a girl, and obviously drug, chemical abuse. A lot of these kids are amputated due to the causes of war, the tragedies that they have to go through. A lot of human rights effort are doing everything to restore their cho the children back to their homes, enroll them in schools, give them places to stay, and to return to their former communities. Uh, the rescue and rehabilitation and, and hope, there's, uh, there are groups such as UNICEF and the UN that are doing everything possible for these kids. And that is my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>